Gronoland is Sweden's oldest theme park and one of Europe's most famous. But when a rider lost their lives riding the Jetline roller coaster, after a mechanical failure caused her and others to be thrown from the ride, it would cast a shadow over the park. What had caused the accident, and did the numerous incidents in the hours and days prior, have something to do with it? This is the story of the Jetline roller coaster accident. Dating back to the 1880s, Gronoland in Stockholm, Sweden, stands as the country's oldest theme park and one of Europe's most iconic attractions. In 1883, German businessman Jacob Schulteis leased a small park in central Stockholm named Gronoland. Initially, he set up small carousels and other amusements as part of his business plan. Starting with modest kiddie rides like merry-go-rounds and carousels, the park has evolved into a major theme park with not one or two, but eight roller coasters, all in downtown Stockholm. However, one downside to its central location is that there is no more space to grow and, as a result, the park is relatively small by world standards, but has made good use of that space. Adding to its appeal, Gronoland is not just about the rides. Doubling is one of Sweden's leading venues for rock and pop concerts, one notable event in 1980 saw a record attendance of 32,000 concert goers for a Bob Marley concert. 1988 saw the opening of a new roller coaster at Gronoland, this being Jetline, a clone of the nightmare roller coaster at Camelot Theme Park in England. The design gained worldwide recognition for its chained lift hill featuring a curve, which, as far as I can tell, was one of, if not the first, to have this. Built by Zero and designed by Werner Stengel, Jetline reached the top speed of 56 miles per hour and a max height of 105 feet. Although Jetline has no inversions, it has a respectable 1 minute and 30 second ride time and a maximum g-force of 4.5, and in 2018, it ranked as the 39th best roller coaster in the annual Golden Ticket Awards. However, in 2023, Jetline would see its darkest day. Moving over to Sweden, one person has died and nine others were injured on Sunday after a roller coaster derailed. Three eyewitnesses say the incident unfolded when the coaster partly derailed mid ride. The 140 year old park has now been closed until further notice. The 25th of June 2023 started like any other day at Gronoland. Being the start of summer, it marked the beginning of the busy season. But not all had gone smoothly that morning. Although the park had opened at 10 a.m., guests were frustrated that the Jetline roller coaster, for some reason, had remained closed. These frustrations were quickly dissipated before too long when ride mechanics declared the ride could now open. However, the ride was temporarily halted after just a single run when ride mechanics wanted to inspect the vehicle. This gave some guests the impression that the ride was experiencing some kind of difficulties, as reported to the media later. Shortly before 11.30am, the ride seemed, at least, to be working normally. As the Jetline roller coaster stopped at the loading station, 14 new riders boarded the vehicles, including three in the very front car. As with many roller coasters with no inversions, Jetline had no seatbelts. Instead, relying solely on G-Force to hold the rider down, it simply had a lap bar to stop them standing up. While this is usually sufficient for such rides, in the case of an unusual mechanical event, it can spell disaster. As the Jetline roller coaster climbed its famous curved lift hill, no one on board knew this would be the last time that year it would do so, and that all of their lives were about to change in an instant. As the coaster journeyed down the first hill into the tunnel at the bottom and around the steep curve beyond, an eyewitness below the ride said they heard noises that didn't sound usual. When they looked up, they were horrified to see a wheel assembly fall from the front car and hit the track below, as the ride abruptly stopped when the front car partially derailed. There was total panic, one eyewitness said. Sadly, the response wasn't very good. The staff didn't seem able to deal with it. Another witness said people ran from the incident, while others jumped a fence to try help. 
Meanwhile, ambulances, fire trucks, and a helicopter rushed to the scene of the accident. Unfortunately, however, it became apparent that the incident had been a tragedy. The three people in the front car had all been ejected. Two of them were in serious condition, while sadly, a 35-year-old woman had unfortunately died. Of the remaining 11 riders, seven others were sent to hospital. In the immediate aftermath of the accident, both the Jetline roller coaster and Gronalund were closed. The news of the accident spread swiftly not only across Sweden, but right throughout Europe and around the world, prompting the question of how such a failure could happen at such a beloved and popular theme park. One thing was certain though, the wheels on the front car had detached, but the question was how and why. In the days following the tragedy, members of the public who had been at the park began coming forward with their stories regarding the Jetline roller coaster in the days and hours before the accident. Natalie Seedon told the media that she and a friend had rode the Jetline the day before when it abruptly stopped, leaving them stuck. We were not allowed to get off and technicians were called. I don't know what the problem was, but they fixed it. One guest who rode the Jetline an hour before the accident came forward to explain how, after he rode, a ride mechanic came and checked the front of the vehicle he had just sat in. I wouldn't be surprised if they had suspicions that something was wrong, but let it go anyway, he said. While another guest said his daughter and friend rode Jetline, but the lap bar had been broken. They clung to the bar until their knuckles turned white, but it went up and down. It's supposed to click, but this one didn't lock. Although this last complaint didn't directly relate to the accident, it did raise the larger question of park maintenance. The investigation into the accident was conducted by the Swedish Accident Investigation Authority. Although the investigation is ongoing and a final report isn't due until June of 2024, investigators quickly ascertained the primary cause of the accident was the front support arm of the train's first carriage braking, first on one side and then on the other causing its wheels to fall off. In addition, the accident is subject to a criminal investigation too. The prosecutor in charge of the case said in a statement, we know what happened, but we don't know how it could happen. He also alluded that the injuries most likely could have been avoided if seat belts had been available. When the final report on the accident is released later this year, I'll be sure to post a community update. But for now, I'd like to know your thoughts on how a newly installed support arm could break. If you enjoyed today's video, I'd love it if you subscribed and joined me for the next one. To watch my coverage of the Greyhound bus decapitation, you can click the link on screen. And as always, thanks for watching.